my name is Margaret Adele, and this is my moment. Through the entirety of my booktube channel, I have been obsessed with indie books. I have reviewed over 100 self-published books for my channel. I have made so many friendships and connections with indie authors. I have delighted in how strange indie books are. But for the most part, I have accepted that I am niche because of this. The book internet in general tends to prefer traditionally published books, usually of the YA fantasy variety, although sometimes it can differ. So imagine my surprise and delight when a certain book series of sci-fi romance, self-published by its author, suddenly blows up on book talk and then bleeds over into booktube. I am, of course, talking about Ice Planet Barbarians by Ruby Dixon. I read the first book for a reading blog not too long ago, and then I read like the second one in a day too, and I am delighted by how much love there is for this book series because this is what a lot of indie romances are. Are. This is all about a young group of human women that is kidnapped from Earth and taken up by evil aliens. The cargo hold they are sitting in gets ejected during turbulence and they end up crash landing on this ice planet where they meet good guy aliens and then end up, you know, pairing off with them one by one over the course of the series. Now, of course, I'm way oversimplifying that, but uh, the real big point that is both shocking and delighting people over the book internet is... The fact that these good guy aliens that the human women are connecting with are seven foot tall horned blue dudes with not entirely human genitals. <laughs> That's the best way to describe it. Now, nothing is like really, really overt and, and wildly not human. It's all recognizable <laughs> as human and apparently they're biologically compatible, <laughs> but the book internet has been taken by storm and I am so delighted even as I find this hysterical because it is so painfully obvious that this is not a kind of book that the book internet is well versed in because for all of this book seems strange it's pretty standard for its genre if you read a lot of weird indie sci-fi or sci-fi romance this happens a lot uh, a group of, of human women gets kidnapped from Earth, and usually they end up somehow escaping or getting away from the bad aliens that kidnapped them and then end up hooking up with good aliens. And there's a lot of faded mates thing where it's like, on site, you know that they're the one. Although, personally, I've read that more in, like, indie shifter romances, which I'm still waiting for one of those to become wildly popular. But you know what? I'll accept the sci-fi romance, too. But anyway, uh, I've noticed a very wide range of reactions from various people on the book internet from, wait, this is kind of good actually, to the fuck did I just read? And I understand. It's a <laughs> genre that you kind of got to ease your way into if you're not aware. So that is what I am doing today. I have three different recommendations of sci-fi romance for you, and uh, I kind of have them leveled in a way from beginner intermediate to expert based on your comfort level with this kind of genre so if you want to get into sci-fi romance but you're like i don't know that i'm prepared for blue alien dudes then you can use one of the beginner or intermediate books and if you're like margaret no not only did i not feel shocked by giant blue alien dudes I want something even weirder. I have that for you as well. So let's start with the beginner level for those that are just getting into sci-fi romance and aren't sure they can fully do the horned dudes yet. I suggest Orion by Ruby Lionsdrake. This is the uh, pseudonym or pen name for one of my favorite authors of sci-fi and fantasy, although I mostly prefer her sci-fi work. And it is a very familiar premise. A group of human women is kidnapped from Earth by bad aliens, and over the course of their captivity, I guess you could say, they discover that one of said evil dudes is actually an undercover agent sent to keep them from being trafficked and introduce them to an entire team, an entire ship's crew of other good people. But here's the catch. In this instance, at least for the first book, the male protagonist is human. Now, he did not grow up on Earth, he grew up somewhere else, and there's a lot of talk about 
the origins of humans and and whether Earth was the origin or they came from somewhere else because they're both very clearly human. Uh, so this is very good for the uh, people who have not done a lot of speculative romance quite yet and you need both to basically be human here. Now, I have not gone very far into this series yet, so you might end up with non-human aliens down the line, but as far as I can tell over the course of this series, they're so humanoid as to not really be different enough for anything to jump out at you. Uh, but I could be wrong, but for right now, the first book at least, great pick if you are 100% beginning and you're like, I can't, I can't do the blue people yet. Now let's move on to our intermediate. So this is, you know what, Margaret, yeah, like humanoid is a kind of a thing I'm looking for, but like there's gotta be something alien about them, right? Or like, what's the point? For that, <laughs> I would suggest to you the Dragon Lords of Valdir series by S.E. Smith, the first book of which is Abducting Abby. Now this is a little bit different in which the aliens that the women end up falling in love with were also the ones that took them from Earth and admittedly, the reasoning for this is low-key flimsy to make them not the bad guys, uh, which is why I kind of ended up giving up this series a while into it. But in this one, the men mostly look humanoid, except for the moments when they shapeshift into giant dragons. That's right. Dragon shapeshifter aliens. Um, and that's also very common. Apparently, dragons are known throughout the universe and many different species of aliens can turn into them it's it's very common i i swear i need like someone to do a trope talk about this but anyway <laughs> uh this one um is admittedly a little bit more focused on the macho alpha male thing than i like and obviously ice planet barbarians is to a certain extent but they're also thrown off their game constantly in that one, which I like. Uh, this one also has a through line of a big bad foe um, that runs through every book. And this big bad foe is basically constantly trying to attack. You do get to see <laughs> dragon fun times. But however, in this book, it is always um, the, the sexy times, at least for the books I've read. And I've read four to five books into the series. It's always human and human together or dragon and dragon together. You never see the, the cross species thing. So for all of the bard mains out there that love seducing the dragon, I'm sorry, you're not going to be able to live out that fantasy here. But for everyone else, it's like, you know what? I want it a little bit strange, but not super strange. This is a book series I would go with. And last up, the ultimate super weird. Yes, please. I love the blue horned dudes. Give me something even weirder this is for you. And um, this is definitely the expert level in terms of sci-fi romance weirdness. In some ways, I might actually rank it more weird than Ice Planet Barbarians, which I understand is a bold claim, but just hear me out. So the book is actually a standalone, although there might be a prequel coming, is Red by S.J. Sanders. This is a Red Riding Hood retelling, only in this case. The wolf is actually three wolf-like aliens, and they, they're like werewolves that never shift into humans. They're like that bipedal werewolf image that you have. They're like that, but all the time. They never turn back into humans. They have four eyes. It's great. And um, double the endowments of a human man. And when I say double, I do not mean size. I mean quantity. <laughs> they have two <laughs> two dicks <laughs> and they are both used <laughs> and it is a poly story because in this story our young protagonist who is our red riding hood stand in um is going through the woods with her bright red hair covered because in this world red actually attracts these aliens that have crash landed down to earth it is technically an alien invasion story dystopia basically and she ends up meeting with these three wolf-like aliens who, by nature of their culture, will all mate with the same woman. They will eventually create a polyamorous family with three wolf dudes and one female. That's standard for their culture. So this is a poly story. 
This is an alien story. This is a monster romance story. And admittedly, it goes, it tries a little bit too hard to have a plot at the end. And I get that that sounds weird, but stick with me. <laughs> at the end, it feels like they're trying to put this bigger plot and this bigger purpose into the story when it's not really what you're there for. You're there for the weird monster sex. But <laughs> there is uh, possibly going to be a prequel. I believe the author talked about it in the final uh, author's note that there is another human disgust that I believe will be a Snow White retelling uh, novella that would take place before this one. Honestly, I wouldn't mind getting an entire series of these. Um, my favorite part was reading some of the reviews were like, there was far too emphasis, much emphasis on the romance. And it's like, you didn't know what you were reading. Now, if you want more from this author, I have looked up some of their other work and it seems to be a lot of this, um, a lot of the definitely not human very obviously not human male protagonists moving forward. Now, that is my recommendations for you. But if you are into this genre already, I would love for you to give recommendations to me. Because honestly, there are still some things where I am sad that there are so many very heteronormative tropes in these series, despite their weirdness. And I would love to see series that have these ideas without the heteronormativity, because what always shocks me is that in all of these series, they're always biologically compatible. <laughs> like, regardless of how weird, how different they are, they're always biologically compatible. There's always baby making involved in these things. At least I think the Dragon Lords of Valdir, the, the women have to get bitten essentially werewolf style and turn into dragon shifters themselves before they can have kids but for the most part uh i would love to see this kind of book being queer and i guess the polyamory one is kind of but also it's it's still heteronormative in its own way i would also love an instance where the female character is the monster and i know that there's like entire forms of anime that have that process and have that set up, but I want weird indie books with it because I read weird indie books more than I watch anime. But in general, I love that this self-published book is having its moment. Do I have a lot of really high hopes that we're suddenly going to break open the doors and a lot of other books are going to be able to get through and indie books are finally going to get all the notoriety that they deserve because they've been pushed aside for so long? Honestly, no. Honestly, I'm pretty sure that once this book series dies out, indie books will probably go back to being in the shadows once again, or else the only kind of indie books that will ever get any real mainstream airtime on the book internet will be books like The Ice Planet Barbarians. But you know what? I'm not going to be a pessimist about this. I am going to enjoy the fact that a genre that I love, a kind of book that I love and that I have dedicated years of my life to promoting, is finally getting a little bit of time in the spotlight. Ruby Dixon's books have now gotten number one on like four different Kindle stores. It's definitely taking off. I'm very proud, and it feels weird to say that I'm proud because I don't know her, but like too proud to see an indie author getting the limelight like this. It's fantastic. I hope she's enjoying all of the extra sales and extra word of mouth that she's getting and if I'm really lucky if, I, if we're really lucky this will finally be the moment where indie books can break into the book internet as a whole and finally start getting more of the attention that they deserve but that just might be the optimistic hipster in me talking Regardless, thank you so much for watching. If you end up reading any of these books or you have read and you have opinions on them, either good or bad, that doesn't matter, please let me know. In general, I'm probably going to continue with the Ice Planet Barbarian series. If for no other reason, then it's just fun to have a book series that's indie that I can talk to a lot of other people with. That, like, has a fandom and fan art. It's great. I'm, I'm part of the cool crowd now. <laughs> Regardless. With nothing else to say, I hope you have a wonderful day and a marvelous tomorrow.